As of April 29, 2020, the Federal Reserve has injected $2.3 trillion in order to fund stimulus checks to businesses, households, hospitals, local governments, and so on and so forth. This has led to the Fed holding a record $6.6 .6 trillion in assets, and analysts suggest that this number could reach $10 trillion in just the next few months. Of course, this is a required step in order to ease the negative economic impact that the recent situation has brought forth. But when everything is said and done, what will be the long-term repercussions of all of this stimulus? Well, starting off, to answer that question, we have to first take a look at where this money is even coming from. First, the US Treasury will attempt to sell IOUs to basically anyone who is interested. This could be banks, companies, or you. Buying IOUs from the US government is seen as essentially a no-risk investment as it is backed by the federal government. However, selling these IOUs will not be enough to pay out the enormous stimulus checks promised, especially when there are less buyers in the market for these IOUs as many businesses and citizens are struggling to survive financially. To make up the deficit, the Fed engages in what is known as quantitative easing. In this scenario, instead of the Treasury selling the IOUs to the public, it will sell these IOUs to the Federal Reserve. And the Federal Reserve will just print this money in order to pay the Treasury. Actually nowadays, they literally just digitally add the money into bank accounts to pay them. If you have ever watched the show Money Heist, quantitative easing is precisely what they target. If the government can simply print trillions, a lot of which is spent inefficiently, it's not that big of a deal for a few robbers to print a couple billion. Anyways, what does artificially creating all of this money do? Starting with the positives, they're quite obvious. This money will help thousands of businesses survive, millions of people to keep their jobs, and help millions to simply carry out daily life. As for the negatives, the first concern that comes to mind is inflation. Money is just like any other product, and having trillions more in circulation will increase the supply of money while the demand stays constant. Basic economics will tell you that this would lead to US currency decreasing in value, or essentially inflation. But this is actually not true. The thing is, the amount of money in circulation is just one factor. There are six main factors that lead to inflation, which are cuts in interest rates, increase in money supply, higher wages, devaluation, increase in value added tax, and inflation expectations. The Federal Reserve has been cutting interest rates and increasing the money supply, so these two factors will be contributing to inflation. But as for higher wages, well, 30 million Americans have just filed for unemployment, so wages aren't going up anytime soon. So, if anything, wages will stay stagnant. As for devaluation, this is the phenomenon in which importer goods rise in price due to increased domestic demand. People are going to be much more cautious when buying things moving forward, so devaluation is not going to be a threat. Moving on to value-added taxes, the government is trying to stimulate the economy by offering incentives, so it is highly unlikely that we see any increases in any taxes right now. And finally, we have expectations of inflation. This is when workers expect their wages to increase with inflation. But many people who currently have a job are simply happy to have a job, and there are millions unemployed, so I doubt most people are expecting their wages to be increasing. Considering all of this, only two factors are supporting inflation while four factors are opposing it. Furthermore, cut in interest rates and increased money supply are some of the less influential factors. On top of this, the value of a currency is also dependent on the foreign exchange market. In other words, a currency's value is also dependent on how other currencies are doing. And the thing is, virtually all countries are injecting money and offering a variety of stimulus packages. So when everyone is injecting money, its impact on inflation is further reduced. As a result, money injections will actually not cause inflation. They are actually helping to prevent deflation which is the real threat during recessions. Taking a look at the historic inflation rate of the US, you'll see that a negative inflation rate or deflation accompanies every recession. So stimulus checks are beneficial to inflation rate as well. But there is one large negative impact, which is increased national debt. The national debt of most countries were already at all time highs. The number actually doesn't matter, but what does matter is that the debt to GDP ratios were also at all time highs. And governments have been forced to spend even more given the current situation. 
However, this spending will not be enough to prevent the GDPs of countries from falling while also increasing national debts. So over the next few years, stimulus plans will lead to an increase in the debt to GDP ratios for most countries. Unfortunately, we have no effective way to prevent this from happening and currently the national debt is not the most pressing issue. In fact, in April, a survey found that 88% of Americans believed that the stimulus plan was the right thing to do and only 1% thought that the national debt was the most pressing issue. Overall, the stimulus plan has led to large money injections which are actually not that big of a deal economically as there are many other factors pulling down inflation and this money is essential to at least somewhat maintain national GDPs. However, over the long term, this will lead to higher debt to GDP ratios which we will eventually have to deal with. But given the current situation, injecting more money, though not the most efficient, is the best choice not only economically but also morally. If you guys thought this video provided an in-depth analysis of the economic impact of stimulus checks then make sure to drop a like and consider subscribing to see more questions logically answered. But until then, I'm Hari and I'll see you guys on the next one.